Hello everybody in Vintage World. This is Mac Kirkpatrick, president of the Vintage Motorcycle Club. And this is James Wonder, vice president of the Vintage Motorcycle Club, Vintage BMW Motorcycles Owners Club. And we are both friends of the mark because we are friendly. We want to recap what happened today. Today was the first day of our rolling rally to the rally. James? Yes, and we had a great time today. We started off on Long Island, New York, um, and we had the great pleasure of visiting Peter Nettishai today, right back. If you ever get a chance to see Peter Nettishai's fabulous museum, it will not be too soon. I'll say it like this. If you die and have not seen Peter Nettesheim's <laughs> museum, you have missed something fabulous in line with the, the pyramids in Egypt. <laughs> his enthusiasm and his what, what he's put together artistically, architecturally, is unbelievably inspiring. So we had a fabulous time and we want to thank Peter Nettesheim for his hospitality, uh, for showing us around, and he could have just gone on and on and on. It was it was extraordinary. He has a wealth of, of detailed information, isn't it? Everything you ask, Peter, it's just, you know, just voluminous information. And he's very, very sharing. Yes. Yes, so um, for everybody, know that this will be continuing until the MOA rally. Um, that we have a full schedule online on our website at vintagebmw.org and please visit that please come and join us tomorrow we're going to Roland's Le Bon's for a book signing I, I brought all my books of Roland's to sign I'm really looking forward to that I'm looking forward to meeting Roland in person um, so please come and join us the day after that we're going to be with Chris Benjamin and Andy Cahora and Max BMW um, up in New Hampshire, please come and join us. Please check the schedule and please come and join us. Our, our schedule is posted at vbmw.org. Vintagebmw.org. And we welcome you, if only for breakfast or for dinner or for a day's ride or part of a day's ride. Or if you can only join us by car or if you, if you ride a Honda Goldwing. We don't care. We're very inclusive. We're going to go and end up at the vintage BMW, I'm sorry, pardon me. We're gonna end up at the uh, BMW Motorcycle Owners of America rally just outside of Richmond, Virginia. And the Vintage Club in coordination with the MOA has arranged to try to get an example of every BMW motorcycle made from 1923 to 1993. And we're doing a very, very good job. John? Yep. Lee DeYoung is handling that portion of the rally, and we look forward to seeing you there. However, if you don't make it to the 100th anniversary at uh, the MOA rally in Richmond, you can you can wait until the, the next 100th anniversary, which will be in 100 years. Oh wait, maybe maybe you won't be able to do that. I, I'm wrong. So please enjoy the video. Um, of us at um, Nettesheim's museum, wonderful museum. Um, so please enjoy that, um, and that's coming up next. And follow us tomorrow, and for the next almost seven days, as we make other videos, uh, as we travel from Long Island down uh, uh, into Vermont, and, and down uh, to Jim Hopkins uh, Museum in Maryland, Bob's BMW, uh, Todd Trumbors in Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Join us anywhere you can for however long you can. Thank you. Good night.
fine. So, uh, oh, there you go. I hope, does this work on that fender? This works on that fender, All Peter. Right, so I'm going to pick a, uh, a selective area so that uh, <laughs> I'm going to put, put it on the side if that's all right. That, that, uh, wherever that, you want. That fender looks like it's been painted. Um, poorly. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't say that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take the choice spot. Beautiful. Beautiful signature. Look at that. He's been practicing. Yeah, Rembrandt. When, you know. All right. You got the first signature there. Thank you, Peter. Right. For his whole life, Peter's been wishing he had a name like Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Top, sh top shelf you see there, which was used in the Victoria. Um, that engine was sold to about five different motorcycle manufacturers, but they also <coughs> sold it to farmers and whatever. But th the challenge was, in order to um, uh, really work properly in a stationary environment, you needed obviously better cooling. Yeah. Because the motorcycle goes through the air, you get natural cooling from the movement of the bike. If you take that same engine and you demand of it uh, high horsepower, high horsepower being about 6.8 horsepower, it generates a lot of heat and you got to have some air moving around it. And one of the things that they did very early on in order to reduce the um, amount of heat that the engine was experiencing is they put a double sump system. So it's an M2B50 with two sumps. And I've been collecting for 40 years, I've only seen one. I haven't even seen a picture of another one. And you'll see that engine in the other by serial number. And again, what for me is so interesting is that um, when you look at it, it looks like a, many of you know a little bit about BMW R32, it looks like a regular R32, but there's about 10 different changes on it that came within the next 100 you know, R32s. In other words, they improved very quickly. Um, so that by three months after they started building this, they already had, you know, three, four, uh, in three, four months, they already had 10 running changes. Now, you've all seen the picture in the background. I'm sure you've all, you know this picture, any book that you have on uh, BMW motorcycles always starts with this. And one of the reasons is that this is the earliest photograph that BMW has of their uh, production facility. And the interesting thing that, about this is if you look carefully, you can actually count nine R32s. There's one on the back, one from here, one back there, one here, one behind on the tire, a couple there, there's nine. And we know that that picture was taken in November of 1923. And we also know that in November of 1923, they only built 20 R32s. That's all they built. So almost and half of them. Are half of them are in that picture. And this bike was built in November of 23. Hmm. Oh my gosh. Well, so the likelihood that 50, 50 this bike chance, is in there. 50 50 chance that this bike is in that picture. Yep. Yeah. And that is the oldest known BMW. Well, that's the oldest. It's the 22nd one made. There's no, 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 you know, the 21 before it all gone. And this is my dad. whole floor because it's a full basement. Yeah. The steel work was done by an engineer and the rest of the design was, was mine. The idea of the beams, the, the 
brick work, the, every light, uh, these lights, by the way, came from the World's Fair, 1939 World's Fair, there's five of them as you see down here. Also notice fire suppression system. Yeah. That's not required, I put that in. So what we're saying is Peter Nettersheim, not uh, right. Uber collector, architect, and designer. I wanted to be an architect. That's what I wanted. <laughs> when I went to school, that's what I wanted to be. But um, <laughs> I ended up moving to an engineering degree. And then even with that, uh, it wasn't really practical for me. So I moved to a, and finished with a marketing degree. But my real passion was always engineering. Um, did you ever think it would come to this level? OK, yeah. So. Um, I, uh, I, I, I had the other garages, and I knew what yep. they were, and I had a vision for what this would be. And um, one of the challenges, you know, like how do you get this built? You know, one of the things, most people, how, how you build something like this is you come up with a plan with all the details, you give it to a builder, and he says, okay, I'll charge you this, you give it to another builder, he says, I'll charge you this, you give it another, you find which one you're comfortable with, and you give him the deal. I didn't do it that way. That's the efficient way to do it. Yeah. I didn't do it efficiently, unfortunately. But in the end, I got what I wanted. So this is an elevator. I came up with this design. And uh, it's two platforms. So there's one here and there's one there. And it serves all three levels. And I used it to bring the everything up and down. down. just right it took a little bit of thought and time you know something peter yeah every time i'm here and i and i have a great you know it, obviously i'm fairly close and yeah. it's wonderful to be here but every time i'm here the passion the yeah. detail <laughs> and everything yes. else truly yes. and honestly shows yes. through it's definitely a little nuts yeah you know there's a lot of people who have a hobby and uh, you know granted yes this takes a passion it takes some motivation of course yes it takes some money and there's a lot of people that have the money, but none of them would ever do this. I used by Rumble's forces in, uh, in 1943 in North Africa and Tunisia. Uh -huh. This actual bike was there? It was used by his forces, yes, okay. in Tunisia in 1943. <laughs> Something else, right? <laughs> and I love, the, again, the attention to detail. See the, see the bullet hole? Yes, the attention to detail is just... You now, you guys over there, you tremendous. see the guy looking at you in the mirror there, right? Right. Yeah. Watch yeah. out for him. <laughs> okay. So I spent a lot of time with mirrors uh, making it look like another tunnel over there. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of detail going in there. Yep. All right. Nice day today. Everybody's out. Close the door. We've just had a tour of Peter Nettesheim's museum, and I have to say it's absolutely world class in so many respects. The motorcycles are amazing, the workmanship is amazing, the architecture is amazing, the thought process is totally amazing. And uh, on behalf of the Vintage BMW Motorcycle Owners Club, Peter, you've been very gracious. Thank you very much. I really right. appreciate it. I'm, I'm glad you came. And I, all, I have something for all of you. And uh, please take it if you're going to wear it. If you're not going to wear it, then don't take it. So there's a little pin. And with this pin, you get uh, free uh, entrance at any time to uh, the museum.
Thank you. But you got to have the pin, otherwise you don't get okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't take it one unless you're going to wear it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to put it Thank on you. for the lapel or something. You want Thank one? You. Okay. Can I just tack it to my forehead? You can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have it. <laughs> okay. You got one or two more. Thank you. Here. All right. Thank so that's you. it. And I think the uh, last one's for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Okay. Thank you. All right. James, that's James, it. James Wonder is behind the camera. Yes. Thank, thank you, James. Thank you, James. Amazing. Appreciate it.